Okay, so on this circle, the inscribed angle, excuse me, is angle A, B, C. The inscribed angle is angle A, B, C. This angle right here is what we call inscribed. It's inside the circle, and not only that, its vertex is on the circle. That's what makes it different from a central angle. Central angles are also inside the circle. AOC is the central angle. Angle AOC is the central angle. But ABC is the inscribed angle. The intersected arc so kind of what I do is I extend the lines of my inscribed angle, and this is the arc. You kind of make like a snow cone with it. Okay, so the intercepted arc would be arc AC. Intercepted arc is arc AC. Now, there's a relationship that exists between inscribed angles and the arcs they intercept. Um, so we know central angles, Whatever the measure of AOC is will also be the, the measure of the arc. But looking at it, does the single angle and the inscribed angle, are they the same measure? Just by visual inspection. Is the central angle and the inscribed angle, would they have the same measure? No. Which one is smaller? The inscribed angle is smaller. Okay, the inscribed angle is smaller. There's a specific relationship that exists. It's not just that it's smaller. There's a specific um, relationship that exists. Now, I'm not going to just come out and tell you. I've got a bunch of examples there on your paper that I want you to look at. And you should be able to see um, on each of them beside the circle, it gives you the measure of angle ABC. And it also gives you the measure of angle AOC and the measure of the arc AC, the, the second two uh, are a little crazy, but you should be able to see. So we've got the scenario where the intercepted arc is less than 180 degrees, so the first three, it's smaller than 180 degrees, and it's in different places. Um, the next three is when the intercepted arc is 180 degrees, and then the last one is when it's greater than 180 degrees. So I want you to look at those pictures for a second. Trace out the inscribed angle. Trace out the inscribed angle and the matching arc on every single one of them. I want you to trace the inscribed angle and the matching arc. And then I want you to see if you can pick up on what the relationship is between the inscribed angle and its intercepted arc. And then we will, okay, it is half the measure of its intersecting arc. So central same. Central same. Inscribed is half. Inscribed is half. Now you can tell obviously that it's smaller. Okay, it is smaller, it is less, but it is exactly half. Now I just I have some specific examples here and every time I make sure like when it was less than 180, each time I kept the the uh, arc length and the angle the same. I just put it in different places. I wanted to show you that they don't always look nice and pretty like the, the Pac-Man kind of looking thing right here. Um, sometimes like that last one, that one was a little bit tricky to figure out, right? Um, sometimes they are in kind of weird places, but that relationship still exists. Every single time, the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Uh, so let's use that piece of information again. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and to figure out the answer to this question. They tell us that BD is a diameter of the circle with center O. A, B, C, and D are on the circle. If the measure of arc AB is 100 degrees, so arc AB right here is 100 degrees, find the measures of as many of the numbered angles as possible. 
So it would be great if we had a central angle that went with that 100 degrees, um, but we don't, okay? This angle right here is not a central angle because its center is not on the center of the circle. So that angle that I just marked right there is not 100 degrees because it is not the central angle that matches uh, that arc, okay? So we can't use central angles, but we can use what we just learned. <clears throat> so I'm going to extend, since, since AB is the arc right here, I'm going to identify the inscribed angle. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to extend those lines right there so I can see that if I trace those back, the inscribed angle for that 100 degrees for that arc AB, the inscribed angle is angle 7. So what is the measure of angle 7? Angle 7 is 50 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to draw that in there and write it down there so we can see it on both. Okay, now they want us to find the measures of as many as we can. Um, so that probably means that there's more than just that. Well, turns out that's not the only angle that intercepts that arc. If I look at it from this angle, these two lines also intercept that arc, do they not? Okay, so that means angle 4 is an intercepted arc, an inscribed angle for that arc, AB. So that means uh, angle 4 is also 50 degrees. Okay, those are the only two inscribed angles. But, they told us that BD was the diameter. So let's look at the arcs for a second. Let's look at the outside. If BD is the diameter, and we know this part from A to B is 100, what do we know about from A to B? If BD is the diameter, that's going to cut our circle in half, right? So from A to B is 100, what is it from A to B? Eight. Okay, half of our circle is one eighty. So that other part is eighty. Obviously, this picture is not drawn to scale because that arc looks bigger than the arc from A to B. But you know, can you roll with it? Okay. <clears throat> so we're talking about this part of our circle now. So let's see what inscribed angles we can come up with here. I see. Angle 2 is inscribed for that 80 degree arc, so the measure of angle 2 is 40 degrees. Is there another one? What other angle? 5. Okay, this one's a little bit harder to see, but that's why I put that picture on there, uh, on your notes. Angle 5 Look at the two sides that create angle 5. It is also an inscribed angle for that arc. So angle 5 is also 40 degrees. Uh, and I think that may be all that we can figure out. Because if we, <clears throat> all we know, we don't know how this other side is chopped up. Okay, all we know is this entire thing is um, 180 degrees. Well, we can label one more thing. We can label. Since this whole thing is 180, then angle 1 and angle 8 together form a right angle, but we don't know how to split it up from there, I don't think. I think this is all that we can live with, because we don't know any other information. Okay, so I think that's all we can do about this one. <clears throat> uh, now, part 
Uh, part B resets the problem. Okay, part B resets the problem. So I have a clean picture up here. I don't I didn't need to put another one on your notes, I'm sorry. Um, but part B says if we're given that the measure of angle one is fifty-five degrees and the measure of angle two is fifty degrees, find the measures of the four minor arcs A D, B C, C D, and D A. Alright, so 55 angle 1 is the inscribed angle for which arc? Angle 1 is the inscribed angle for which arc? BC. Extend the lines. Okay, angle 1, extended sides. BC is its intercepted arc. So what's the measure of BC? 110. 2 times 55. 110. Okay. All right. So angle two. Which arc does angle two intersect? AD. So what's the measure of arc AD? 100. Okay. So I'm going to put these on the circle to help us out because you're probably, hopefully, you're thinking, well, how are we going to figure out AD and CD? We don't have their inscribed angles. Well, we still have the knowledge about these arcs right here. So if this is 100, what is it from A to B? 80. So B is the diameter, it cuts it in half. So which half of the circle is going to be 180? If from A to B is 100, then from A to B, it is 80. And then what do we know about C to D? 70. Okay, if, that, if from B to C is 110, then what we've got left is 70 degrees right here. Okay, so all this stuff works together. It works in conjunction with each other. Now, there is one more thing um, that I wanted to talk about that is not on your notes page. Okay. <clears throat> Something called a circumscribed angle. Okay, a circumscribed angle. C A D in this picture that I have right here, this is not on your notes, okay? But in this picture right here, um, angle C A D is what we call a circumscribed angle. Well, a circumscribed angle with two sides are tangent to the circle. Okay, the two sides of that circumscribed angle are tangent to the circle. So we've got 90 degrees right there. The question that's being asked is find the measure of that circumscribed angle. Okay, CAB, find the measure of that circumscribed angle. So here's what we use. What do we call this angle right here at B? What do we just call this at B? What kind of angle is that? Inscribed. Okay, the vertex is on the circle. It's inscribed. So 30 degrees right here means that we can label that arc from C to B. What can we label that arc with? 60 degrees. If that arc is 60 degrees, what's our central angle COB? 60 degrees. Central angles and arcs have the same measure. So if we know this is 60, and this is 90, and this is 90. How do we find that angle right here? What kind of shape do we have going on right here? Uh, not sure. Just in general, it's got four sides. Quadrilateral. How many degrees are in the quadrilateral? 360. So, Angle CAB plus 90 plus 60 plus 90 equals 360. So that says angle CAB plus 60 is equal to 180. I just moved the two 90s. Okay, so angle CAB.